In this lecture, I'll give you a high-level overview of the NetApp ONTAP operating system, the different platforms that it runs on, and where you would use each one. ONTAP has evolved from NetApp's original operating system way back in the day when the company first started and it's still their most popular and widely deployed operating system. The different platforms that it can run on now are FAS, AFF, ONTAP Select, Cloud Volumes ONTAP, and NetApp Private Storage. I'll give you an explanation of each of those platforms in the lecture here. Basically, the differences are, is ONTAP running on hardware, or as a software virtual machine, and is it on-premises or in the cloud? All of the different ONTAP platforms have got practically identical features as far as the software is concerned, and they're managed the same way. A benefit that you get from this is if you've got multiple different platforms running in your enterprise, you don't have to learn a different operating system. You don't have to learn a different administrative interface. You can manage them all exactly the same way. So that makes your life much easier as an administrator. ONTAP supports multiple varied workloads over a multitude of supported SAN and NAS storage protocols, and it has got advanced features. So you'll sometimes hear ONTAP being called the Swiss army knife of the NetApp portfolio. It can support pretty much any workload and it's got all of the advanced features to help with that as well. Okay, the first platforms we'll talk about here are the FAS and AFF. FAS stands for Fabric Attached Storage and AFF is all flash FAS. These are both hardware platforms. They both run exactly the same on top operating system and are managed exactly the same way. The difference between them is that FAS systems are hybrid storage. That means that they support both SSD disks and spinning disks as well, your SAS drives and your SATA drives as well. AFF systems, your all flash FAS, support SSD only. SSD are flash drives, that's why it's called AFF, all flash FAS. And these are performance tuned for flash storage. So some of the settings that you can set as an administrator and also other settings that are unseen by you and under the hood, these are all performance tuned for SSDs in AFF. So you're only allowed to use SSDs in those systems. FAS and AFF platforms can both be included in the same cluster. So you might have some applications, some workloads that require the higher performance. You would run those on your AFF controllers in the cluster. Maybe you've got other workloads that don't require that high performance. They could run on FAS controllers using spinning disks also in the same cluster. So you can see here that on tap and your FAS and AFF systems are very versatile. You can run those different workloads on the same storage system. Depending on the controller model with these hardware platforms, a cluster supports up to 12 nodes, that's 12 controllers. If you're using SAN protocols on there, or if you're using SAN and NAS, if you're using NAS only, then it supports up to 24 nodes. That depends on the model of the controller though. Higher end controllers support that number. The lower end controllers, you're gonna be able to support less nodes in your cluster. So let's have a look at these FAS and AFF platforms, have a look at what they look like. So to get here, go to the NetApp website and on the NetApp website, click on products here. This is where you can find all the different NetApp products. And AFF is under all flash storage. It's the AFF A series here. FAS is under the hybrid, hybrid flash storage and there is FAS there. So I've gone onto the FAS page here and you can see the current controllers that are on sale now. Now, obviously, NetApp do refresh their hardware offerings very regularly, so it's pretty likely that by the time you see this, that there's gonna be different models available. But you can see where to get the information there. Just go to the NetApp website, go under products, and you can see it under there, and you'll see what the current models are. 
So you can see for FAS, there's currently three different models that are available. The difference between them is for the, the capacity and the performance. So if you get the FAS 2700, that goes up to 17 petabytes of raw capacity. The 8200 is 57 petabytes and the 9000 is up to 138 petabytes. The performance scales in line with the capacity as well. So depending on how much capacity and performance you need, that will guide you as to which actual model that you're going to be purchasing. I will go into that in more detail further on in the course as well. We'll go into a lot of detail about the different controllers. Also, I'll show you at that point the different ports that are on the back and what they do. Okay, so that was the FAS controllers, AFF. When AFF first came out, it actually ran on the same platform, exactly the same chassis as the FAS systems. And it was just basically a system that only had SSDs in there. But it has evolved since then. And there are a lot of settings under the covers that have been tuned by NetApp now. And also the actual chassis, the hardware is different for the AFF than it is for the FAS now as well. So you can also see your AFF platforms here. Again, the differences between the controllers, which one you would buy, depends on the capacity and performance that you require. Okay, so that was the FAS and AFF. Back onto the slides again. With your FAS, and AFF systems, you can add external disk shelves there as well. So some of those models, you can put disk shelves in the chassis. With all of them, you can add additional capacity as well by adding disk shelves. And you can see here, I've, I've got a whole cluster here. So you can see that I've got multiple controllers in my racks here. You can see that I've got different models of controllers in the same cluster. And you can see that there's a lot of capacity here because I've got disk shelves above and below those controllers as well. So you can see how your cluster can scale out to have a, ma a massive amount of capacity and performance there. Let's have a look and see where you would see information about your disk shelves. So I'll go back to the NetApp website again to find that, I'll show you that in a second because I'm on the part of the page here where you can see the different models of disk shelves here. Again, this gets updated over time as NetApp release new hardware. You can find out full information about the disk shelves here, what kind of disks they support, the maximum capacity, etc. To find that information, again, it is under products on netapp.com and disk shelves and storage media is down here. Okay, back to the slides again. So that was our FAS and our AFF and the disk shelves that can be attached to them. With the FAS and AFF, the use cases there, well, as I said earlier, it's they support multiple varied workloads over a multitude of supported SAN and NAS storage protocols, and it's got flexible features. So pretty much any workload. That can be enterprise applications such as Oracle Database, SQL, and VDI, your virtual desktop infrastructure. It does have the required performance for most database applications. It can be used for consolidation and virtualization. Because it's so flexible in the workloads that it supports, you can have multiple different workloads running on the same cluster. You can run artificial intelligence and big data analytics applications on there like Hadoop, NoSQL, and Mongo. And it's got a feature called Flex Group where you can have massive volume sizes on there. So if you've got an application that needs a huge flat namespace, such as an, an engineering or design where you've got loads of files or very large files that have to be in the same namespace, then you can use FAS and AFF for that as well. Okay, next thing that we can run on tap on. This is again on the, the FAS and the AFF storage. There's a feature on there called Flex Array that allows you to use third party storage space behind your ONTAP controller. So that allows you to get the full ONTAP feature set like NAS protocols, the data protection and efficiency, et cetera, that we're going to be talking about later using storage capacity that you already have. So let me show you what I mean with a diagram. So this is actually from the data sheet that you can download from netapp.com. Again, this is the data sheet for NetApp Flex Array. And you can see here that I have got a storage array. So let's say that I've got 
an old SAN system that comes from EMC and it doesn't have the features that I need now, but I don't want to throw out all of the disks that I've got on that storage system. Well, Flex Array allows you to use that disk space. So what you do is you buy your, your FAS, your AFF controller, and you put that in front of your old legacy SAN system. You connect your SAN system into the back of your controller, and you can now use ONTAP to manage that disk space. So it just allows you to use your old disk capacity. It means that you don't have to throw it away. You can get all those ONTAP features and still use your legacy hardware. That functionality was previously available with V-Series hardware a few years ago. It used to be enabled in hardware, but it's enabled in software now. So it runs on your same FAS systems. You just need to enable that Flex Array license. And the storage arrays that are supported to run behind this are EMC, HP, Hitachi, IBM, and NetApp E-Series array. So if you've got an old legacy SAN system and you want to get that full on tap feature set using the disk space, Flex Array is your answer. Okay, next thing that we can run on tap on is on tap select. So FAS and AFF were our hardware platforms. On tap select is software defined storage, meaning it's running as a virtual machine and it can run on VMware, or Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, KVM, on any kind of commodity hardware. So this gives you a inexpensive way that you can run on tap. It's not on your NetApp dedicated hardware. You can run it on any kind of hardware, like any kind of x86 based hardware. So this is a more inexpensive option. It still managed the same as on tap on FAS using the same GUI and the same command line. The disks that you're going to use with on tap select can be in the same chassis that you're running on tap select on, or it could be external. So there could be a, a NAS or a SAN system behind there that you're using for the disk space. With on tap select, it's up to eight nodes in a cluster. Each node here is a virtual machine. With ONTAP Select, premium and standard licenses are available. The difference is that if you want to have SSD disks, then you need to get the premium license. The premium license also supports more CPU cores and RAM. Both licenses support all features. So there's not any features that are limited in the standard license. And with ONTAP Select, it's really quick to get up and running. You use the ONTAP Deploy Utility for that, and you can be up and running in less than 10 minutes. So where would you use ONTAP Select? Well, ONTAP Select, it gives you that full ONTAP feature set, but you're running on less expensive commodity hardware. So where would you want to do that? If you've got a distributed set of remote offices or branch offices, a robo environment, then you could put ONTAP Select there possibly backing up to a central FAS system. So maybe you've got your head office, your main data center, and you've got a hardware FAS system there. And you've got lots of distributed smaller offices, and you don't want to put a hardware solution in each of those remote offices because it would just get too expensive. But what you can do is you can run on tap select in your distributed offices, and you can still back them up to your central location. Other places to use on tap select. If you've got an all software defined data center environment, I know this can sound a bit strange, but it might just be your company's policy that they want everything to be running virtualized. So even your storage, you can do that with on tap select. Maybe in your main data center, you want to have a, a quick, easy, inexpensive test dev environment storage for that on tap select is a good use case for that disaster recovery. Maybe you don't want to have a full disaster recovery site, which is built up as much as your primary site. So you've got your primary site, you've got a hardware FAS or AFF in there, and you, you build your own disaster recovery site, but it would be too expensive to put all the same hardware in there. What you can do is you could run on tap select over there. So if the main site does go down, you can fail over to the remote site. You're not gonna have the same performance there, but it's going to allow you to get back up and running quickly. Another use case for ONTAP Select is VNAS. This is a NetApp term 
what NetApp vNAS is, is on tap select running as a virtual machine. And this can provide NAS support in a SAN environment. So for example, if you've got some HCI, some hyper-converged infrastructure, and you've got your, your compute and your storage on there, and the storage is running a SAN storage, which is giving that to the compute. Well, if you want to have NAS support on there as well, you can run on tap select as a virtual machine in your HCI environment, and you've now got NAS support there. So that was our on tap select use cases. Next one to talk about is our on tap cloud options. And before I start talking about them, it's easiest to talk about like why we have them, which is there's limitations with the public cloud storage options. So the, the main public cloud hyperscalers, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, they all have their own block file and object storage services. With ONTAP Cloud, you can run ONTAP in the cloud and then you can provide that ONTAP storage to your instances that are running with the public cloud provider. But you might think, well, why would I want to do that? Because the public cloud providers, they've, all, they've already got their own storage options. Why would I do this? Well, the reason is that there's limitations with those public cloud storage options. Limitations are that they've got basic snapshots and cloning capabilities. The snapshots take up the same space as the original data. With ONTAP, it doesn't work like that. We're going to be talking about snapshots a lot later on in the course. I'll give you the full details then. But for now, it's enough to know that with NetApp snapshots, they, they're, taking in, they're taken instantaneously and they don't take up any space at all when they're first taken. With the public cloud providers, a snapshot is basically a full copy of the data. So it takes time to take the snapshot and also you're getting billed for that storage space. So the NetApp snapshots are a lot more efficient. Another thing, if you need to restore from a backup with one of the public cloud backup solutions, they don't give you a recovery time objective guaranteed, meaning they don't guarantee when you're going to be back up and running again. Actually, in AWS, they say that it's going to be lazily copied back. Basically, that means that if you do need to restore there or take a snapshot, it's going to take a long time to do that. With using ONTAP in the cloud, you're going to know exactly how long it takes to get back up and running if you do have to do a restore. Other limitation, there's no sharing of block storage. So if you're using one of those block storage options on your public cloud provider and you've got an application which has got distributed instances and they need to share that same block storage, it's not going to be possible. Also, file storage supports limited protocols. So your NAS protocols, AWS only supports NFS and Azure only supports SMB. What if you need to support both protocols? Also, they don't do deduplication, so it takes up more storage space, which again, you're getting billed for. There's no simple replication into the cloud. Also, no simple replication between cloud providers, and they don't support antivirus scanning. So hopefully, that's a long enough list. And obviously, these are all things that ONTAP can do. So that's why you would want to use ONTAP rather than the cloud provider's own native storage options. So... First one that we can use is Cloud Volumes on tap. This was formerly known as on tap cloud. Cloud Volumes on tap is full featured on tap software which runs on an AWS or Azure instance. As I was saying before, all these different options for on tap, they all have the same feature set and they're all managed the same way. With Cloud Volumes on tap, it uses Amazon Elastic Block Storage, EBS, or Azure Storage. So obviously, you need the disk space for this to be able to use. So you provision an instance. Let's use AWS as the example. So you provision an instance in AWS, and then you also need to have the storage space for it to use, which is Amazon Elastic Block Storage. If you were running this on Azure, you would have the instance where Cloud Volumes on tap is running, and you use the Azure Block Storage behind there. Cloud Volumes on tap does support Ceph's NFS and iSCSI clients, so it's got the full protocol support there that the cloud providers can't do. The performance and capacity that you're going to get depends on the instance type used. So again, on AWS, if you buy a, a more expensive, higher performance instance, that's going to give Cloud Volumes on tap that higher performance. 
and the capacity depends on how much capacity you buy from the cloud provider because it is using that underlying space from the provider. Also, that's licensed by NetApp as well. The more capacity you want, the, the more expensive the license is going to be. So cloud Volumes on tap supports all the on tap features. We will be talking about all of these throughout the course. Ones that are particularly relevant to running it in the cloud are the thin provisioning, the deduplication and the compression. So it takes up less storage space, so that saves you money. Also, it does NetApp encryption. Now with the cloud providers, you can have your storage encrypted, but it's encrypted by the provider. What if you don't support, what, what if you don't trust the provider? Well, when you do your, your cloud volumes on tap NetApp encryption, that's encrypted by you. So nobody, even the cloud provider is going to be able to decrypt that and see what you've got in your storage. It supports Snap Mirror and Snap Vault, which are on tap replication features. So you can replicate between your physical data center and your cloud environment. So that gives you backup and disaster recovery. It does flex clone volumes. So if you've got a test and dev environment and you want to be able to quickly clone your instances for testing, you can do that. And again, it doesn't take up any storage space originally because it's using NetApp snapshots. Supports all your NAS protocols. So if you've got workloads that require both SMB and NFS as well, you can run those on cloud volumes on tap. It supports high availability and you can tier your cold data as well. So with, with the cold data tiering, when data has not been touched for a specific amount of time, you can move that off SSD, for example, onto lower performance spinning disks or over to object storage in the cloud provider. Again, saving you money. Cloud Manager is used to provision and manage the service. It can be run on premises on Linux, or it can be run as a very small instance at the cloud provider. So Cloud Manager is used for the original provisioning of this. You can also use Cloud Manager to configure your replication between sites and to create volumes and other basic tasks like that. You can also manage it the same as on tap on FAS. Again, like I was saying before, with all of these different on tap systems, you can manage them all exactly the same way. The use cases for cloud volumes on tap, disaster recovery in the cloud. So you've got your main data center. You don't want to go and have a disaster recovery building that you have to build yourself because that would be super expensive. This is a way that you can get less expensive disaster recovery rather than sending it to another building that you own. If your main site goes down, then you can spin up instances in the cloud and you can be running in the cloud. You're going to be able to do that because you replicate from your main data center to the cloud environment, to cloud volumes on tap. You can also move existing applications to cloud without re-architecting. Because it does support all of the different protocols, that's where you're not going to be able to, that's where you're not going to have to make any changes. It's suitable for test dev environments because of the fast provisioning and because you can flex clones, you can quickly make clones as well. And another use case for this is VMware Cloud on AWS. You can run a private VMware environment in AWS now. If you're doing that, then Cloud Volumes on tap is a good choice for the storage. Okay, we finally got to the last platform that you can run on tap on, and that is NetApp Private Storage. NetApp Private Storage is a FAS or AFF hardware system, which is owned by you. It's hosted in an Equinix colo facility, a co-location facility, and that data center has got direct connectivity to AWS, Azure, and IBM software. So with Cloud Volumes on tap, that was supported on AWS and Azure. Now private storage is AWS, Azure, and IBM software. So by having your own hardware system in a data center, which is cloud adjacent to your cloud provider, that gives you very fast connectivity to the cloud environment. And because it's running on your hardware, you've got full control of that hardware. So you've got full control of the hardware and you also, again, get the full on tap feature set. You can connect to multiple cloud providers 
because Equinix is connected to all of them. That gives you diversity if you need it. Maybe you've got one workload where it's more suitable for AWS and another one that is more suitable for Azure. You can run both those workloads using that same shared hardware storage that you own in your Colo data center. Also allows you to easily switch between cloud providers if you want to later as well. So use cases for NetApp private storage, high performance for your cloud-based workloads. Again, this is running on the actual NetApp, FAS, or AFF hardware, so you get that hardware performance there. It can be used for your cloud-based disaster recovery again, the same as we could with our, our cloud volumes on tap, but again, you're going to get the better performance. Another big reason, it meets privacy, regulatory, and sovereignty requirements. Maybe the industry that you're working in, there's regulatory requirements there that means that you can't use storage which is running in the, the cloud in software. Well, in that case, it's probably likely that you're going to be able to still have servers, machines running in the cloud that require external storage, but you use the NetApp NPS for that. And finally, another use case again is if you're using VMware Cloud on AWS, NPS can be a good choice for that. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.